There are many, many interesting features that are coming to the PlayStation 5. Some obviously more interesting than others, but at the end of the day, I feel like Sony has a firm grasp on what players want. And although today's news might not come as a surprise to some people, it might come as a surprise that Xbox isn't doing the same thing even though you know we're going into a new generation this could be a drawback of the whole you know end of generations thing that sony uh you know is trying to rebel against and that microsoft is obviously trying to succeed with um i personally prefer the generations you know you you get something you buy something new you're playing games that can't be done on the old hardware. It feels like you spent your money and you're getting something well worth your money. Microsoft isn't really doing that, but this isn't really about that. This is more about what Sony is doing, and I got to say, it's very exciting. What's up, everybody? Crep Gamer here with Crep Gamer Reviews, back with another video. Thank you so much for checking it out. I appreciate it. Please like, share, subscribe. I would appreciate that as well. It helps out the channel, and it means a lot to me personally. Uh, you know, I always kind of say... The best way to support a small YouTuber like myself is a simple like. You can hit the bell so you're notified of everything as soon as it drops. You can share it with friends. Uh, just check in on the content. You know, I do daily content. Everything's unscripted, off the cuff. My own personal thoughts and the feelings. And, you know, I'm very passionate about gaming. So hopefully that comes out and you guys can kind of understand that. Um, with that being said, the PlayStation 5, the things that it's bringing to the table, right? We know about the haptic feedback. We know about the, the pressure-sensitive uh, controller. We know that they've completely reinvented this thing when they could have just rested on their laurels, right? We know that they're bringing, you know, a a, a button that's going to replace the share button with, and, and we know that they're going to be able to create things, and we know that we're going to be able to do amazing things. Look, Sony is known for their first party, their amazing exclusives. As we get further and further into gaming and, you know, next generation, the games that I personally have loved over the years tend to be going a certain way, tend to be more going at, towards a games as a service type future. And I'm not a big fan of that, to be 100% honest with you, you know? Like, I think the Suicide Squad kind of going towards games as a service, the Avengers game is kind of games as a service, even Assassin's Creed games are games as a service now. And I'm not saying that all games as a service are bad, because they do get a bad stigma, but at the end of the day, I feel like when you buy a game, especially if it's a $60 game, you should have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Yes, you can add content to it later. That doesn't necessarily make it a games as a service. Games as a service are things that continually will get updated with stuff. But a lot of times, games as a service games launch very bare bones, like Sea of Thieves, like State of Decay 2. So unfinished stuff. If you're releasing stuff that's unfinished, Rainbow Six Siege, uh, you know, I'm against that for sure. Okay, but there are certain instances. Hopefully, Avengers is uh, proves that to be the opposite, where there's a ton of uh, content and stuff like that. But Avengers is games as a service, right? They're going to keep continuing updating with uh, you know more content and more characters and things like that. That's realistically a games as a service. Destiny is a games as a service. The next Halo, supposedly games as a service, um, and those things have a place. But at the end of the day, I, I think that it's also good because Sony is now probably the only big third party or, or first party or even that third parties aren't doing is putting out these great, amazing uh, AAA single player experiences without being games as a service, without a bunch of microtransactions. And yes, like Ghost of Tsushima, right? That game is getting a free update, but that doesn't make it a games as a service. Just like Days Gone got like a free horde mode or whatever. It doesn't make it a games as a service. They're just giving people added value. So, you know, I, I think that Sony has a lot of this stuff on lockdown when it comes to being able to reach out there and offer people something that they want. Um, and when it comes to next generation, like I already did a video about it. It looks like, no, it doesn't look like it's confirmed that, you know, the Xbox uh, and, and the PlayStation 5 are going to be able to do Call of Duty Black Ops in you know 120 frames on a mode and they're also going to be doing hardware based ray tracing they really stress that which is something that a lot of people said that the playstation 5 couldn't do uh, 4k hdr again stuff that people kind of said that the xbox couldn't or the playstation couldn't do i like that right i like the fact that uh you know playstation is kind of breaking boundaries playstation is out there doing things that you know people said that they couldn't do and I, I, I enjoy that. I think that that's something that, you know, they don't get enough credit for. So now 
it looks like according to this FAQ, the PlayStation 5 is going to have a Blu-ray drive XL, which supports 100 gigabyte Blu-rays. Uh, Xbox is using the regular Blu-ray drive, which are 50 gigs for games, which is very, very interesting. So basically, even though it was kind of confirmed in the Mark Cerny deep dive, um, they, that they would be utilizing this. Not a lot of people were talking about it, and it looks like uh xbox is just going to be using the regular 50 gigs and then they have the 100 gigs just for movies uh you know because microsoft doesn't really believe in generations and they need to stay compatible with the old blu-ray tech for gaming so xbox discs will work on both consoles whereas sony you know they don't have to really deal with that so the ps5 is going to use a 100 gig uh blu-ray drive xl next generation which is really good and this was confirmed with the black ops uh information that came out as well which is also very interesting because everybody was saying that you know only xbox had smart delivery and smart delivery this and smart delivery that right like people were saying well you know you got to have smart delivery you got to do this you got to do that like i really feel like um when it comes to next gen uh, you know that wasn't a thing that was locked to, to to Xbox only. Like PlayStation can do that too, and a lot of people are just kind of falling for the the whole trickery of of Microsoft. So, like when it comes to upgrading, they clearly said a physical standard edition disc to digital next generation upgrade will not operate in a discless console. If you choose to upgrade your console, your physical PS4 disc to the digital version of the game, the physical PS4 disc must be inserted into the PlayStation Five disc drive in order for the PlayStation Five to play the game. Um, if you buy a physical copy of Black Ops Cold War on PlayStation 4, upgrade it to the digital version of PlayStation 5 and lend or sell the copy, can I still play the game? No, you can't. So, um, next gen physical standard edition PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X uh, includes uh, the physical edition and they have that kind of stuff. So, a lot of people were confused by this. Uh, I believe due to the wording, Microsoft doesn't allow developers to charge for a next gen upgrade and i believe it's 69 dollars for the cross gen or whatever so you could technically get it and play it right away on the xbox one or ps4 and then you can get the next version um if you paid that price and i'm not sure how that works with um you know with with this but apparently microsoft maybe isn't really gonna allow that or whatever I, i'm not really sure so that's a very interesting aspect but the fact that and i know a lot of you don't have physical drives so this probably isn't really a huge point of uh conflict for you but it is very interesting that you know for as much as we don't do generations and stuff like that you could see games launch on multiple discs on the uh xbox series x or whatever uh just because you know it, it's one of those things where you know people still like to buy some physical stuff like i still buy some physical games not all the time but especially particularly with, uh, you know, when it comes to collector's editions and stuff like that, I do find it odd that a company like Ubisoft is stopping the sale of physical discs in their collector's editions for Xbox One in the UK. Uh, you know, you'll just get a code for a game download uh, with the uh, whatever the collector's edition stuff is. That's a little bit weird to me, and I think that goes to prove that Microsoft might be phasing out the uh, discs and stuff like that a little bit quicker than, than than Sony or a little bit quicker than a lot of people may be expected. Clearly, Microsoft wants people to kind of go in all in with, uh, you know, the, the digital and the streaming and, you know, that kind of stuff. So I personally find it to be very interesting uh, how this is going to work out for both companies. I don't really know, but I do feel like, you know, like I'm definitely going to get a a blu-ray drive and enabled ps5 that's that's the one that i want i've got a lot of playstation 5 discs you know i still watch 4k blu-ray discs and the reason why is because if you order a 4k blu-ray you usually get the 4k blu-ray the standard blu-ray and a digital copy uh the problem is is i don't have good enough internet to stream 4k so if i want to watch a 4k movie you know what i have to do is i have to watch it in my 4k blu-ray player which is like my ps4 uh, or excuse me, is my Xbox One X at this particular time. So, you know, 
kind of is what it is. But I'm very interested to hear what everybody has to say about this. For me personally, it's, um, you know, would this be a make or break thing for you? I don't know. It was kind of annoying. I remember on the Xbox 360 days to have multiple discs for games. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, I don't know if it's going to hamper anybody from getting an Xbox Series X, but just a little cool another feature that kind of came out about the uh, PlayStation 5. And with that being said, please you leave your comments below. Uh, if you want to hit me up on Twitter, at the underscore crap gamer. If you want to hit me up on Xbox Live, MOH, uh, Space Crap Gamer. If you want to hit me up on PSN, just Crap Gamer. Uh, and I really do thank anybody who took their time out of their busy day to watch one of my videos. It means the world to me. Uh, like, share, subscribe, all that kind of great stuff. Please stay safe, happy, and healthy, my friends. Rack them up. Game on. Game on. Crap Gamer, out. Unscripted.